it's me, Bussy, and welcome back to Hot or Rat. And today we'll be reviewing episode three of Drag Race Down Under. The runway category was Bogan Prom. I didn't know what it meant, and apparently the contestants didn't either. Well, some of them did. My sources are telling me that Bogan means redneck, but that Australia doesn't have proms, they have formals. So it seems like there was maybe just a miscommunication across the board. Anyways, in the main challenge, our girls were split into groups to perform Queens Down Under. No points for creativity, but at least you won't forget the name of the song. <laughs> Before we get started, a quick message from today's video sponsor, Surfshark, an award-winning VPN that can protect your identity online, block ads and trackers, and my personal favorite use, gain access to a larger content library on Netflix. For example, US Netflix doesn't have access to RuPaul's Drag Race, but with Surfshark, you can change your location to the UK, for instance, and get access to RuPaul's Drag Race in an instant, all 13 seasons too. Oh, and look over there. They also have access to It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia and Friends. You can also also use Surfshark to get better prices on things like airline tickets and mask your internet traffic from your ISP, who, by the way, are watching everything you do. And I mean everything. I also love using Surfshark because you can use it on all of your devices with unlimited device login. And there's no risk in just trying it out because Surfshark offers a 30 day money back guarantee. So if you need a VPN or you're just looking for a better one, then click the link in the description of my video and use code BUSSY to get Surfshark for 83% off and three extra months for free. Remember to click that link in the description and use code BUSSY. And a big thanks to Surfshark for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get started, y'all. Okay, this has to come off my hair because that's not gonna work for me. Okay. Our first girl group was named the Outback Fake Hoes. And our first fake ho is Scarlett Adams. It's also worth noting that Scarlett was the leader of this ho brigade. Scarlett had, I think, my favorite performance look of the entire cast tonight. She looks gorgeous, it fit well. It was kind of giving me like denim and diamond vibes, very 80s. It was really fun. Her lyrics in the performance were good, solid. Not super memorable, but they were there. So yeah, this gets a Scarlet Red Hot from me. And on the runway, her Bogan Prom realness is giving me heavy metal and reflective vibes. I had no idea what the hell was going on until she was talking more with the judges and explaining it in her confessional because we do not have the word goon here in America to describe the bag inside of wine boxes. Like I think we just call them wine bags. So while it took me a while to fully understand and get caught up with what was happening, I ultimately loved it. I think she had an amazing concept Concept, it was executed well, and it was funny. And my God, zoom in on those feet. She said, man feet. And the heeled flip flops on the runway, I was like, Ugh but like perfect for this challenge. You know, I mean, disgusting, but genius. She was dressed in silver, but this look was certainly gold. It's hot. Next up, she's very dry, kind of like your vagina. <laughs> okay. At least according to her performance verse. That was a wild performance. I bet her and Ketamine give a mean show back at their home bar. The outfit, nah, it was there. It was on her body, whatever. But like she was so funny and entertaining. I don't care what she's wearing. Like the judges said, manic over the top. She was wiggling it and jiggling it. And I was laughing all the way to the bank. And also Rue, gave her a laugh. I think she was the only contestant to get a laugh, at least according to the edit during the performance. I need to put her verse in a hearse. Get it? Cause she killed it. It was hot. On the runway. <laughs> What the hell is going on here? Literally, what is this? I have no idea. I've never seen anything this bizarre on the runway. She's got like pants that are up to her bosom. For what reason? God only knows. Maybe she was going for some sort of like slouchy overall thing because she's got a white tank top underneath and then rhinestoned arm sleeves. I, girl, I was lost from start to finish, but somehow she made it look kind of good. It had her signature quirkiness and I think was a little redneck. At least the can purse and missing tooth and cigarette earrings were. I think I'm gonna give this look a hat. Next up, she would like to speak to the manager of this dance hall. It's etc. etc. She's giving me Karen vibes up top with what looks to be like a deconstructed flamingo dress on the rest of her body. That was one really confusing thing for me in these performances was like none of the girls matched. Not one of them. There was no <laughs> cohesive theme besides like danceable. I was like, girl, we can just tell these girls a theme for this little performance number. No, really, their look was so strange, I didn't even recognize them until I saw them talking in the confessional. Overall, their performance was good, the lyrics were there, self-branding was present, non-binary finery from Down Under. 
I think I will, etc. constantly proves that talent knows no binary. This performance was hot. But back at the prom, cash them outside. I literally thought that was Bad Baby on the runway. Another look, again, where I was like, where is et cetera, et cetera in this? It was very strange. I'm not totally sure where they incorporated Bogan into this look. Everything that I Googled, I saw nothing like that. And my understanding of what a redneck is here in America definitely does not look like that. I think there's a little too much um, city influence happening in this look for it to be considered redneck by definition. The outfit is cute though. It gave me those like mid 2000s throwback vibes. Like every girl that I knew in junior high owned this exact outfit. But even the girls that dress like this dressed up for prom. And honestly, I think just throwing on pink sweats with a little rhinestone booty message and some Uggs for the runway, I don't think it's enough. This is gonna be a rat. Next up, another queen gone too soon, Coco Jumbo. In Coco's performance, I honestly was not that mad about the singing, but I'm also tone deaf, so that could have just been me. What did y'all think? Please sound off, let me know what you were thinking in the comments. Cause I was straight up confused by Coco's critiques. Like she was the only queen of purple bedazzled bodysuits. She really did look gorgeous in the performance. The judges were also critiquing her for messing up a couple of times, which I didn't really notice. The, the performances were pretty casual. It slipped right past me, but they also critiqued Anita for the same thing, but sort of like wrote it off as her just being like silly and campy. Kind of a weird choice to do that. But again, maybe that was just my birth defect of not being able to hear different tonations and singing melodies. I thought it was. Back at the prom, was she dancing by herself? No, she was out in the bushes with a friend doing extracurricular activities. Again, the judges were smoking something. I don't know, something about these episodes is feeling a little fever dreamish. <laughs> but they got the critiques on Coco all wrong in my opinion. This look I thought was very smart. Campy, tacky, rednecky. I mean, this is that very like cheap, ugly prom dress. And then there's the great details of putting the bush in the hair, the dirt on the knees. She really did think it through. And considering that most of the girls didn't even look like they were on the same runway tonight, I think they, should have understood what she was doing. What's that old saying? A queen in the hand is worth two in the bush? This look is hot. Our next group is called Three and a Half Men and I needed three and a half shots to get through it. First up is Karen from Finance. Her performance look, let's start with the look, really interesting. It looked like one of those tacky oversized t-shirt things with, a, with like the sexy body printed on it, but also was a burlesque costume, wild. But cool, I liked it still. But her verse? Eh. I was a little let down here. I didn't laugh. Like it ended and I, I was just like stone cold face. Just like, oh, it happened. Okay, it happened. Like she did the corporate thing. Like her lyrics were all related to like being a person that works in an office, but she just never landed an actual joke from it. It was just as if you asked an actual secretary. <laughs> from our camp queen, I just wanted to have a little chuckle. Just one. This was a rat. And on the runway, tone deaf. Again, every time I thought I knew what Bogan was when I was watching the episode, my mind was blown. I was like, wow, this is Bogan too, okay? Whatever you say. She said she was going for middle of the class 80s Bogan realness with no friends dancing by herself. I didn't get it. Did I see the 80s? Yes. Did I see like redneck? No, I didn't. It was very, I think, too put together. There was nothing trashy about it. Like, I, I need those dirty details from a runway category like this. On top of the fact that, oh my God, this is one of the ugliest effing outfits in the entire world. The ruffles, the print. She looks like, like a sad clown. <laughs> and like ugly, yes. Tacky, yes. Redneck, no, didn't get that. Karen maybe forgot to double check her ledger tonight. This was a rat. However, next up, at least somebody took their K tonight. It's Kit the Mean. Now here she's got a real mean kitty. <laughs> Sorry. Um, Kit had my favorite verse of the entire group, maybe of both groups. I think if her group overall wasn't so bad, they could have justified giving her the win. She was so entertaining. Total perfection, made in a laboratory, grade A, pure quality, kitten mean hotness. 
And on the runway, she went kit to green. What the hell is this? Literally, these runways had me so confused. Like, every single queen was a different category. The crazy thing is, though, hear this one out. <laughs> Smells like a... If you put her runway with Karen's, they are both very 80s. It's almost as if like 80s tacky prom was given as a category to some queens and then redneck formal to another. I've heard rumors through the grapevine, if you will, that the runway categories are kept intentionally vague when they're given to the queens so that some will succeed and some will fail. That's just a rumor. Anyways, for what it is, it's a really clean look. It's 80s, it's punk, it's fun, retro, crazy. But for Vogue and Prom, no, it's definitely rat. Next up, Pika Pika, Electra Shock. Okay, let's break down this performance. It was a little erratic compared to her cast members. Sure, I will give the judges that, but at least she was giving us a performance, my God. The rest of the girls were on Ambien, besides Kitta, and she's over there dropping a split every five seconds. Like, can you keep up? No, they, the other girls could not. So while I enjoyed that aspect, I will say the lyrics in her verse were erratic in a bad way. There was no direction. It, she was kind of just jumping all over the place, and then I think she committed the like worst cardinal sin of them all. She called herself basic, then followed that up with basic drag, but I'll make you laugh representing on RuPaul's behalf. I, you can't call yourself basic on the main stage of RuPaul's Drag Race and then say that you're representing RuPaul. <laughs> you just can't, Ru's not gonna like that. In what world would Ru like that? Anyways, I'm gonna split this one down the middle. Uh, verse, rats. Performance, the dancing, take a shot every time she does the splits. I thought it was hot. On the runway, she's giving me Scarlet shock. This was like almost an exact copy of what Scarlet was wearing, but gold. And then the judges went in on this look, just railing her from behind on it, calling it basic, like all this stuff. And I was just like, are we in two separate, completely different worlds? Like, yeah, her makeup you know, could use some finessing, but the drag itself here as presented very much fits the runway category of Bogan Prom. It's just my understanding that trashy, unfinished edges and kind of all over the place with crazy accessories and stuff is what they should have been going for. Was it maybe missing a concept more than just doing the category? Sure, but some of the girls didn't even do the category. So like, how are you gonna be mad at it? I think it was hot. And finally, girl, somebody called Life Alert because she has fallen and she can't get up. <laughs> girl. This was easily my least favorite performance of the night. Like she literally fell on the floor and then spent the rest of the time just like mopping it with her giant buzz. <laughs> and the lyrics were a little confusing. I didn't understand some of what she said and it wasn't really that funny or self-branded either. This for me was a performance worthy of the bottom. I feel like they saved her because they just wanted to like call her a star. And I'm like, okay, well they're all stars. Well, not yet. I don't know. I just didn't understand the justification of not putting her in the bottom for that. This was a rot, rot, rot. However, on the runway, this granny's fanny was packing a punch. Look at the size of that thing. Oh my God. When the fanny matches the bosom. Her concept here was chaperone at the dance, like partying and wearing her best outfit, which I loved, but was it redneck enough? Uh, I'm not sure. It definitely was kind of tacky and cheap looking, which I think she definitely was going for. And even if her outfit wasn't like the trashiest looking, she sold it to me in the character. Like you could tell she was ready to drink more than the kids at the dance and then like pass out in the bushes next to Coco over there getting on with her little friend. This chaperone was hot. Overall, this group was, I think, an obvious second to the first. Their choreography was really disjointed. And I do think, looking back on everything as a whole, that is actually a pretty decent justification for putting a lecture in the bottom. She was the group leader after all of the second one and responsible for making them look good. And I think that was kind of a flop there. However, the choice here to throw Coco into the bottom instead of Maxi did not make sense, love. The win this episode goes to Scarlett, which makes sense here, considering she led her group to a successful choreographed performance that looked really well done, especially compared to the other groups. And I think she was really the only one tonight to really push that runway category to its limits with comedy, camp, fashion. It, it was really well done. Also, <gasps> who put that note there? Has this been here the whole time? <gasps> what is it? Oh my. <gasps> 
It says, watch out. <gasps> if you don't like and subscribe, then RuPaul will bury your body into the fracking branch. Oh my God. You guys better like and subscribe. Oh, and don't forget to check out my lip sync reaction to the bottom two this week over on my Patreon. That's my members only website where my patron family gets access to exclusive videos, early access to my videos, the Bussy Queen Discord server, and more. Click the link in the description of this video to join today. See you there. Tonight, my hottest on the runway goes to Scarlett Adams. I also ask my patrons to vote for their hottest hot, and tonight they've chosen Electra Shock. I also want to say thanks so much for watching this video and give a special shout out to Arcanines, Suzanne Smith, Sandra, Kate Branson, Marla Billy Bob, Gnome Pillisher, Michael Bukowski, and Fox Bell, who've all just joined my Patreon at the hot tier. And Ali Al, Anthony Bradley Cameron, Trey Poppins Christopher, Claire Moosdale, Clark Stackhouse, Georgie Leather, Fabio, Fractalize, Freddy, JJ Bearclaw, Goaty P, Got the Morbs, Jay, Jenny, Gen X, Jonah, Johnny, Kiki, and John, Madam Muffy, Maddie Morissette, Nathan, Olympus Mons Venus, Opal, Queen Sassy Canister, Ron Shannon Shazzy, Sky Sunshine Tina, Timotheus, Timothy Tony Unique Vendetta, and Freely, who are all supporting me at my hottest fact tier, and Angel Caroline, Cyrus Hope, JB, Joseph Wu Deward, JP in Dallas, Matthew, Mike, Nurse Luca, Rochambeau, Robert, Scooby Snacks, Sailor, Stephen, Tom, and Triton, who are all supporting me at the Bussy Queen Collector tier. Ah! <laughs> oh my god. See y'all later. Love ya. Bye. That they keep their categories very. <coughs> Pika Pika. You wanna be a little Pikachu? Is that what daddy wants? Daddy wanna Pika Pika?